What's good everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we'll be going through my round 7 super netball tips and predictions. What am I saying? These are obviously my round 7 AFL tips and predictions, obviously that's what everyone is here for. And uh, as we always do, we'll review round 6. I was at the Anzac Day game, luckily enough I got last minute tickets, so obviously because the, the round ended on Tuesday, the tips will be out on the Wednesday, but normally they're out on the Tuesday. And uh, there will be an Anzac Day match day vlog, all of you guys make sure you stay tuned for that, that'll be out around 4 o'clock on the Thursday. One of the, probably one of the best games I've been to in quite a while. We do review the tips for round six, and oh, do I really want to? Well, obviously I have to, but like, I was stiff. I was stiff, and you guys probably know what I'm talking about. So we started off well. The round started off awesomely. We got the dogs tip right. I thought this is a pretty good tip, because I think a lot of people went free, man. I'm just trusting them as a home grand team, but I just don't think that they're a good side at all, Freya, this year. I just don't rate them. Pradelaide was an easy tip. Most of you guys should have got that one correct over West Coast. The Lions was also a relatively easy tip as well. Now, I did tip the Cats, obviously, but I forgot about all of Sydney's key outs, so there was probably a reason why they got smashed by that much. It shouldn't have been by that much, regardless. I went Adelaide to beat Hawthorne, and it could have gone either way. Adelaide, honestly, escaped a bullet in that one, because Hawthorne, you could argue, deserved the win. Both sides deserved the win, I guess, but uh, Adelaide prevailed in a close one. Now, the Saints tip. Obviously, as a Saints fan, I was always going to back us in, and we, yet again, continue to uh, defy the odds in a way and, and just continue pushing up the ladder. We're sitting first up the round six, a great win against Carlton. And then Gold Coast to beat North Melbourne. That was in a not a 50-50, but in a way, a slightly tough on a tip. It could have gone either way, but the Sun's too good at home. I tipped Melbourne to beat Richmond, and I was on track for 9-9. All I needed was one more to go, and I had everyone telling me, tipped Collingwood, don't go for Essendon. I had that gut instinct in me to go for Eston, and then they bottle it in the last quarter. They're up by 28 points at three-quarter time, and they screw it up for me. Like, Jesus Christ. How? Because if I would have gotten that Eston tip right, I would have rocketed up the ranks, because most people did tip Collingwood, but because of that, I don't do as well now in my tipping competition. And, um, I mean, I still got a top 11%, but... No, I'm still a little bit disappointed, but 8 of 9, I'm actually really uh, doing a lot better in my tips. I think the last three weeks, I've got a combined score of 22. Now, we do have a look at the big calls for round 6, and I started off very well. I predicted that the Dogs would lead by 70% or more of the game against the Dockers, and I'm not sure the exact amount, but it was probably more than 90%. They were certainly in the lead for majority of that game, so I got the first one correct. The second game, I said that the Eagles would have a goal king accuracy of 66% or more, now, I'm not sure exactly what they ended up having, but I know for a fact 10 goals 9 isn't 66% or more, so that was incorrect. This is one of my better big calls. I said that Charlie Cameron would score 5 more goals. He ended up kicking 7 or more at Monica. So obviously only needing 1 more to go, I thought surely I can get it done with 6 more games remaining. I said that Cameron would kick 3 or more goals in any quarter against the Swans. And he kicked two as his most, so that was certainly one that I could have gotten correct. I said that Jordan Dawson would record 35 or more disposals against the Hawks. He only had 24. In the Carlton Saints game, I said that Kerno and Mackay would combine for three or less goals. Now, I tell you what, if it wasn't for all these bullshit free kicks Kerno was getting, I would have got this one correct, but they ended up scoring four combined. And then between Gold Coast and North, I said that both sides would score more behinds and goals, but it was North, only North, that scored more behinds. In Melbourne v Richmond, I said that the Deeds would record 80 or more disposals over the Tigers. They only recorded 32 or more, so I needed Nick Dacos in the last game to win the Anzac Day medal. I don't know if people were telling me, oh, it's not really much of a big call, but, you know, it wasn't probably expected to happen because of all the other candidates. And, of course, we all know how well Nick Dacos played on the day. 40 touches, 2 goals, Anzac Day medal, absolute gun of the competition. Unfortunately for the person who commented and got the most likes, I'm not doing it for this week, which I'm pretty happy about. But I said in the last video, I have to do a punishment. And the one that I'm going to do for this week, just so I can get it out and done with, is the bloody Super Netball tips. But then at the same time, they could be the worst team in the competition. Um, so we're going to go to the Vixens to get up in this one by six points. Maybe people who are in Sydney can head off from the AFL Sydney Derby to this Sydney Derby. Like anyone's going to do that. It's the Sunday matches kickstart for our Super Sunday of netball. I'm really excited for this one. I'll be tuning into my couch at home watching the Lightning take on the Fever. We're going with the Thunderbirds by 93 points in a Super Netball demolition. Alrighty, well those were my netball tips. I'm not even going to bother reviewing them. If I get four out of four, I'm a genius. But not pe many people are going to give a crap. I don't want to bore you guys. We're in for my Rand 7 tips. We're here for the footy and I can't wait to get into the Rand 7 tips because we've got a juicy fixture ahead of us with a start that I'm really looking forward to because the Saints are finally back on the prime time slot and we take on the power who we actually haven't played at home like at Marvel in ages. Like the last time we played at home against the power at Marvel 
that wasn't COVID affected was way back in 2013. So I don't remember the last Marvel game I've attended against the Power. The Saints are coming off the back of an impressive win against the Blues in which it was neck and neck for a lot of it, particularly in the first two and a half quarters. But then St Kilda just took control in that third kicking four, five in a row to break the streak of back-to-back -back goals between the two sides. And in that last quarter, it was a bit of a stalemate, but we just our defense was just on top in that one. And we just didn't allow Carlton to score in that last at all. So very impressive win against a side that I still think is decent. They're just not playing great footy, Carlton. But on the other hand, well, they've recorded now three in a row. So they're, they're finding up their form. They're not playing against the best of opponents. So this is certainly going to test them a whole lot more. But... You know, they still got the win against West Coast. You know, you can't really take too much out of that game. A 40-point home win against West Coast is sort of what you expect. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting game of footy. A lot of people are going to be taking St Kilda as the home side and the side they can trust more. But I wouldn't go... I wouldn't say this is anywhere near a certainty. I don't think the Saints are going to get a, a comfortable win at all because put Adelaide are our bogey side. I think we look at the form... It might be 9 or 10 of our last 11 games we've played against Port Adelaide, we've lost. So we're certainly not great against the power, but I think this is different. Under Ross Lyons, it's a little bit different. Home ground, we haven't lost at Marvel yet. I know last year we were 5-1 heading into a Saints v Port game and bottle it, but I think this is slightly different. We should get the win. I think we should get the win, but it'll be a close game of footy, I reckon. Um, but I'm going to St Kilda by 12 with my big call. There'll be actually 10 or more lead changes throughout the entire game. The Saturday games we head to, it's really not a very uh, exciting Saturday of footy. We've got five games, and all five of them are probably going to be crap, but I might stream a couple of them. However, the first one, we've got the Brisbane Lions take on Fremantle at the Gabba. Now, I really didn't think that if we talked about this game before the season started, the Dockers would be this, this crap uh, to start off the season. They've just been terrible. It's just a really unattractive brand of football the Docs are playing, and the fact that they're getting scored heavily against them now is not great. Obviously, leading to this one, the Lions, they're, they're in some form. They've won four of the last five, obviously demolishing a couple of sides in the last few weeks. Uh, they had a game against the Giants where that's Cameron kicked seven, but it wasn't like overly convincing. I thought the Giants were okay. Fremantle, obviously, we all know where they're at. Uh, what was that against the Dogs? They could have lost that game by more if the Dogs actually fixed up their, their goal king, particularly in that first quarter. That was honestly the reason why the Dockers were, they felt like they were in the game in the first half, but then that last quarter... All Western Bulldogs, and in front of a home crowd, that is just very disappointing. And yeah, I'd be let down if I was a Dockers supporter. Right now, with the Dockers form and the Lions form at the Gabba, they don't lose there, the Lions. They never lose at the Gabba, the Lions, and they haven't so far this season playing some good sides. The Dockers, really, I'm going to find it hard for them to stand a chance. I think the Lions should win this game pretty easily, in my opinion. I think a 40-point win sounds about right for mine. My big call that three Lions players score more goals than the entire Fremantle squad. Now, the next game on the Saturday, this is a game that I was possibly going to attend to. Not anymore, though. I've had a look at train timetables. Not happening now. Sydney take on the Giants for the Sydney Derby at the SCG. And I don't think this result is as confirmed as it once was. I think for sure this is a more even game than what it's uh, made out to be. Sydney on the weekend, they were embarrassed against the Cats. I think that was the worst loss suffered under John Longmire like 93 points. It, was, it wasn't great. Obviously, Sydney, we're probably not expected to win given all their outs that they had leading into that with their defensive stocks and without the McCartans and a couple other players. Obviously, the Swans without a lot of defensive stocks had to adjust their game style to suit that. And uh, yeah, it, well, it didn't work. Obviously, the Cats just were way too strong. The Giants, they've been a plucky side this season. They've just been there and about in a lot of the games. They haven't really been embarrassed in any of the games they've played, which I guess has shown... Um, with their ladder position and their percentage, you know, it's not terrible, but uh, it, it's hard to really find any games to be bold enough to actually tip them in against, you know, sides like uh, Sydney, who I think will certainly bounce back. And it's at the SCG, although you never know, the, the Sydney Derbies can always be, a, you know, good contest and close wherever the sides are on the ladder. Again, though, the Giants, they have also a couple of defensive stocks to worry about now with uh, Taylor out and Kennedy. So, yeah, because of that, I think you should be uh, tipping the Swans. Although I could see GWS upset because if they want to take it up to the Swans at their best and with the way they played last week, you never know. But the Swans will respond and they'll win it by 15 points. I think my big call, though, is that the Giants will lead this game for longer than the Swans do. Next up at Marvel Stadium at 4.35pm, we have the Dogs taking on the Hawks. I think there's, there's really not a lot to say about this game. It should be a pretty easy tip. Obviously, the Dogs finding a little bit of form, winning three of the last four after a poor start to the season. A uh, really good win against the Dockers to the tune of 50 points just about. They were certainly the better side for all of the game. And yeah, they're, they're just looking they're looking okay now. They're getting these wins, banking the wins, building up their confidence. Bonten Pelly, absolute superstar. He's having one of the best seasons, I think I heard, champion data-wise um, as, as a midfielder to start off the season. I think only behind Gary Ablett Jr. if he continues this trend uh, that he had in 2010. So the Dogs are looking good at the moment. They're still... 
Um, you know, not the complete side, but I should should get a win against Hawthorne. A Hawthorne side that, I'm not going to lie, have been getting a little bit better as of late. They're not getting embarrassed. And they were playing an Adelaide side who obviously in a lot of form and probably should have won that game. It only took a couple of heroics from Fogarty in that last two minutes to kick the winner. Um, but I think that was a game that Hawthorne probably should have held on and won. So they just got to get better at those... Uh, um, tight game scenarios, uh, but it is at Marvel. Dogs do have the home ground advantage. I think they do play better footy at Marvel, um, and they should win this game. I'm going to tip the Dogs to win it by 31 points. It's not really going to be a spectacle, I wouldn't say, but it's going to be a game where I think the Dogs should get the win. A big call, though, is that Marcus Bontepelli records less than 20 disposals after such a good start to the season. We head to the next two Saturday night games, and it's just disappointing that these are the two Saturday night games, not going to lie. First one is probably the worst one of the lot. We've got Melbourne and North Melbourne at the MCG. And are we, tr are we finally starting to see the real North Melbourne after a promising start? We're now seeing, well, four losses in a row, but four pretty, well, a couple of pretty bad losses in a row now back to back. Uh, that game against the Gold Coast Suns was pretty disappointing. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't watching any of the game, but, you know, the Suns haven't been great this season and North Melbourne didn't really look like they were in the game at all um, from the first quarter. It just looked to be one of those really average games of footy that that you sort of expect to play in these two sides um, at the uh, home ground for the Suns. So, yeah, disappointing from North Melbourne. You maybe expect some sort of a fight back, but uh, coming up against a Melbourne side who is currently doing pretty well at the moment. They're third on the ladder, had a good win against Richmond. It wasn't um, the most convincing win. They certainly had to you know, work their ass off in that one. I think uh, the Tigers were up by as much as 25 points in the second quarter, but the Ds just worked their way back into the game, which I expected them to do. It was a game that I thought they were going to win, and they ended up running over the top of the Tigers. Uh, Van Royen was, again, impressive in only his like, third or fourth game. This should be a no-brainer if you're tipping, I think, 99% of going Melbourne. I just can't see a world when North Melbourne pull off the upset because at the MCG as well, they're just not going to drop this game, Melbourne, aren't they? So because of that, I'm going Melbourne to win it by 51 points relatively comfortably. A big call, though. I think North Melbourne could get off to a decent start, possibly. You know, high hopes, high spirits. They keep the first two goals of the game is my big call. Now, the second game, I think I might stream this one as opposed to the other one. We've got West Coast taking on Carlton at Optus State. Now, this is interesting. It's played at Optus. Carlton aren't in great form. They're in probably the worst form they've been in in quite a while. And West Coast, whilst they haven't been winning games, no one's really been talking about how bad they've been. Like, they've been... I wouldn't say they've been disgraced in really any of the games they've played in so far this season, um, to be honest with you, because you've only got to work with what you've got. A lot of key injuries, obviously not a great list. It's going to be a, a long rebuild, but at least they're showing competitive efforts. And, uh, you know, they're, they're playing all right. I think, who was it? Jai Cully, who kicked four goals. So he's he's an impressive play. He's been all right so far this season for them. And Oscar Allen as well. He's, like, I think at the moment, top five or top six in the Commons. So he's also doing pretty well in his return season. Carlton, this is a game where we just need to see some sort of response. And we saw it in the same fixture last year where Carlton had their backs against the walls against the plucky West Coast outfit. And they just went on to demolish him. So I feel like we could see something here against these two sides, but I'm not too sure about it. I feel like it's going to slowly progress for them to find a bit of form. If they do drop this game against a side like West Coast, and we just really don't know where they sit. I just don't know about finals if they're, if they're ready, if they drop this game. They should win it though, and I think they will. I'm going to go Carlton by 34 points. It should be a relatively comfortable win. Uh, West Coast will be relatively competitive, I feel, but this could be a game where you never know Carlton could get back and firing. And that's why my big call is that the Blues kick 20 or more goals in this game. They just find their scoring power in this one against West Coast who obviously haven't got a great defense. The Sunday games are certainly the more appealing games. I think all three of them are actually going to be decent. I'll be going to a couple of them. The first one, Essendon taking on the Cats at the MCG. Now, the Essendon Bombers, how annoyed would they be after that game on Anzac Day? They literally had that win sewn up at three-quarter time. What a th third quarter, though, the Bombers had. In fact, what a start to the game in the first three quarters the Bombers had. They certainly were the better side. And uh, they just looked all on top of the cop pies. The pies had their backs against the walls in that third quarter, down by 28. But as Collingwood do best, they just find a way to win those games when they're down by, you know, big margins. And they ended up running over the top of uh, Essen. They had no answers to the Bombers, which would be disappointing. But it's a young Bombers outfit, so you can't be too uh, harsh on them. I still think they were good and probably surpassed a lot of other people's expectations, to be honest. Obviously, so far this season. So... Not a disgraceful loss, but certainly something you, you want to uh, look up on. An area of concern for Essendon this season if they're going to let leads like that blow in last quarters. 
Obviously, Geelong recorded a very, very good win against Sydney, 93 points. I don't think anyone was even close to predicting a margin like that. They're certainly looking like they're back to the best of cats. Although it was against a depleted Sydney outfit with a few injuries, they still demolished the Swans and looking like uh, yeah, they're possibly going to be another top four side again this season after a poor start. The Cats are going to this one favourites. I still think I've been more impressed by Essen this season than they've shown more. The back and form though, the Cats. I know it's at the MCG, so it doesn't really play into any side's hands. If anything, probably more Essen's hands. But I think the Cats... Should win. I'll go safe in this one by 19 points. Although my big call will be that the Bombers, and this is through Sammy GFC, he literally just told me to do it, have 10 or more first half goals. Next game at Marvel Stadium. I think this is another Gold Coast Crips game, so I probably will be there, but I'm not sure if I'll be actually as a Gold Coast Crip. We've got Richmond and the Suns taking on each other at Marvel Stadium. Now, two sides certainly disappointing me this season, expectations wise, particularly the Tigers. I think after round six, I had them like in the top four, not in the bottom four. They. I've lost their last four games, and I haven't really shown a lot. They were better, I guess, against the Ds, you know, to be up by as much as 25 points in that game. But again, I mean, they just crumbled under pressure, under Melbourne pressure, and eventually dropped that game after getting overrun. They had a few shots late, the Tigers, but they just weren't able to capitalize. And at the end of the day, the Ds were the better side. Unless you're a certain someone, in which that case, this game was match fixed, and the Tigers should have won the game. Now, the Suns, they did record a win against North Melbourne, but there's not really too much to be um, impressed by. It's one of those games, North Melbourne, I still don't think they're going to be that great of a side this season, and it's a game you'd expect the Suns of to one. They're not great at Marvel this year, the Suns, but I feel like this round, there needs to be an upset, and I think with the way the two sides have been going, the Suns, at their best, at the moment, could beat Richmond. I don't think Richmond have shown much at all this season, especially after round two. I know the Suns, though, are out without Took Millis. That's going to be a pretty heavy blow, which could impact my tip, but I still think the upset could happen here, and I know Richmond fans won't like me for this, but in a good game of footy, I'm actually going to go the Suns in an upset by six points. With my big call, the Suns lead by 25 or more points at any stage of the game. Now, this game, I think, shapes up to be match of the round, to be honest with you. There aren't too many good games so far this round that we've uh, you know, previewed, but this one should be the game of the round. We've got Adelaide and Collingwood taking on at the Adelaide Oval. The Crows are fifth. The Pies are second. Adelaide, four wins in a row. If we're talking about wins, they're the form team in the comp. They're the only team that's won four or more games in a row. And uh, they could have lost on the weekend, as I just mentioned before. They were certainly not at their best against the Hawks, but they're never great at Tassie, the Crows. They're never really a great away side. However, we can't really talk about that when this game's at home, but it's up against the best side in the competition at the moment, I'd say, in the Pies. And what a win they recorded on the weekend. They didn't look great in the first three quarters. I think the bad goal king probably affected them a little bit more than what it, it made out to be. And the umpiring, I don't want to be one to talk about umpires very often, but Jesus Christ, he was certainly more onto Essendon's favour. But Collingwood proved to everyone why they're one of the competition's best in that last quarter, kicking seven goals, I think it was, six or seven goals to zero in one of the great Antic Day performances we've seen in quite a while. So, yeah, what a win from Collingwood. They go 5-1, and one, and this is going to be a good game of footy. I mean, think Collingwood do play pretty well at the Adelaide Oval. They obviously beat the Saints by six. It is hard to look past the Pies. I think any side could win this game. Adelaide, I think, definitely capable of winning it. I think you've got to... You've got to Back in the pies after what they've shown us, and I think they're a side that will win this game. It'll be a close one, though. I don't really see it going any other way other than being a close one. The pies, though, for mine by 12. My big call, though, that the lead doesn't exceed 16 points at any stage throughout the game. So I've gone pretty safe for my tips for round seven. I don't really want to fall too far down in my tipping comps because I'm actually starting to climb up the ranks a little bit. However, in terms of reviewing my tips, I went St Kilda, Brisbane, Sydney, the Western Bulldogs, Melbourne, Carlton, Geelong, Gold Coast and Collingwood. And we do have a few people who all got a 9 of 9. How many people ended up getting 9 of 9? I'm not going to shout everyone out because there's too many to name. But we've gotten... Jesus. How many people? 106. If I would have tipped Collingwood, I would have been a part of the 106. But the only reason why I actually stuck with the Bombers is because if I did stick with them, there would have been a whole lot less people that would have tipped a perfect score of 9. Uh, the best tipper, though, for this round in terms of margin was Princey1421. Let's have a look at the total score for the tips after round 7. And it's Jay the God that just edges out the competition after tipping a perfect score of 9 with 42. Christian in second with 41. George, Lincoln, Ice Tray. And then for 40, we've got quite a few in 40 as well. If your name's in there, there's a shout out to you as well. Well, anyways, those are my tips for round seven. As always, leave your tips down below and a punishment. But yeah, cheers for watching the video. And Day vlog will be out 4 ish p.m. tomorrow. Gather Round full vlog will be out later this week, as well as the Saints v Port video. And then next week, we've got AFL 23. We might have the Gold King Challenge. We've got a whole heap of content. So if you guys are yet to subscribe, now's a good time to do so. I think less than 50% of the people who are watching my videos are actually subscribed. So. 
Do that right now and we'll see you soon in my next one.